Hello YouTube, it's Painter for Hire 1975 with you, and this is part three of how to paint a bust without an airbrush. When we last left off, we were doing the skin tones, and I was showing you how the more stippling effect. Now what we're going to do is we're actually going to mix a little bit more skin tone and make it a little bit more lighter just a tad so we can take our original skin tone and lighten it and this time we're just going to dry brush the highlights okay we just basically you know, just wipe the excess off your brush, like so. And what you're going to do is you want to just take the raised areas and just dry brush them. But you don't want to have too much paint on your brush or it's going to have this muddy look. And you really don't want that. Now I'm going to show you another trick in a little bit that's actually a, that uh, has the effect of kind of like an old age look. You just want just to hit the the high spot with this particular technique that I'm using. Okay. Gonna do the same with the hands. When you're painting something like this, one thing to remember is you always want to take your time with every little piece and thing because when you rush through something I know a lot of modelers they want to be able to, to have that instant gratification to have the piece put on their on their shelf and to like you know have it done and have it looking good but and, and if you and if that's the type of model you want you know that's fine but I always feel it's best to take your time because when you take your time you're going to put your best effort point forward and, and that's what you want when you're painting a model um, so it's very important to just take your time and not really worry about what other people how fast they work you know some people work faster than others I, I have this thing where I will constantly want to I constantly go slower you know, I'm, sometimes I'll see things and I'm like, you know what, I can do that a little bit better if I try this May. I should have tried this. Yeah, this is looking really good. It's really hard to see. That's another thing, you know, I kind of wish that you... I mean, I was watching some of my videos earlier and just checking to make sure. And I will say this. The quality of these videos, um, HD-wise and clear picture-wise, they're a lot better than the Han Solo videos I did. So you guys are getting a much better representation of what it looks like. But still, you just really can't see all the, the little details that I've put in this piece. And like I said, this is not with an airbrush at all. I haven't touched it with an airbrush. And I don't plan on touching it with an airbrush. Because then I would be a liar. Because <laughs> I told you I'd show you how to do this without an airbrush. Okay. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're just going to do a little bit of darkening certain areas. And so we're going to take our original base that we used. Take that, and we're going to mix it with just a little bit of black, not much, just enough to darken it. I'm going to mix 
mix it up. It's gonna, to be honest with you, the color it's gonna create is basically burnt umber. I don't have any burnt umber with right here, so this is uh, how I'm gonna make it. But if you had burnt umber, you would not need to mix this color. You could just use burnt umber. Okay. What you want to do is get a little bit on your brush. And I'm going to actually just get the dark recessed areas that are really, really dark. Like around his nose. Yeah, see that's what looks better. Try to, and I keep forgetting that um, like I have to show you guys this. Anyway. Okay, and I'm just going to do this pretty much on every, every recess, I see, that's really deep recess. You could actually do this with oils, but I'm going to do this like this, just to kind of... So I don't have to really bother with the oils. Now I am, I do plan on uh, giving this a wash in oil when I'm finished here. Well, maybe not when I'm finished, but when I'm close to what I want to do. But if, if, I don't know if you can tell, but if you look right here, it's really kind of much darker. And that's the kind of effect that I'm actually looking for because I want it to give it more of a, you know, a darker appearance in them recessed areas. And that gives it more, it, it's hard to explain, but I guess what the word I'd be looking for is it gives it more of a rotten look. And that's kind of what I'm looking for for this particular piece. So, yeah, that's a... It's a good uh, indication to give it a little bit more definition. You, but when you're doing something like this, you really you don't want to go very stark. I mean, too dark because it, then it will look very stark. I mean, here's here's a key. Uh, this is something that a lot of painters have problems with, and I am be honest with you, I am no exception because I do it too. But one of the biggest problems is when painters do their shadows, they usually do them too dark. Well, a lot of them. I'm not going to say all of them, but a, a, a lot of people, they end up painting the shadows really too dark. And when it contrasts to the shadows and the highlights, it, you know, it actually makes the piece look stark. And it just doesn't have... it. It doesn't have this, it just doesn't have that natural look. I mean, you want shadows, but you don't want your shadows to be so, so dark to where they're just, you know, where it's almost just black. You want it to be kind of around where you want it to be on the side of where it is more subtle. Um, that is basically a cardinal rule that some painters, including myself, I have been guilty of it myself, that is a cardinal rule that some painters break quite often. I have been to many contests and shows and I've seen people's work and I'm like, why did they make this? Why did they do this so dark right in the, in the areas? And that, you know, it's up, it's up to you, though. I mean, if you're not painting for a competition and you're painting for yourself, it doesn't matter. Um, as long as you're happy with the piece, that's all that matters. But, but if you're painting for competition and, and you want it to look more realistic, you don't want, you don't want your piece to have these very stark shadows 
you want it to be as realistic as possible. And if you make the shadows really stark, it just throws off the piece. In my opinion, you know, I have seen I have seen some people have pretty dark shadows and it kind of works for the piece. But to be honest with you, I don't think it would work for something like this. Oh yeah, I wanted to address something. I got a, uh, a private message um, earlier and the, the to the guy that was asking me if you can apply these techniques to the little smaller figures, I would say no. I mean, because I, I don't think the, the, the smaller figures, you I mean, you may be able to do a base or or you may be able to take a little small brush and stipple and everything, but it, you, I don't think you're going to be able to do it with a sponge because it's going to it'll be very difficult to can you know to not cover areas you don't want to because those figures are so small. And but you can do it with maybe a brush, but you'd have to you have to be very very subtle with it. And make sure your brush is small enough to where it's actually making your your lines and stuff to where they're not being what's the word uh, to to make it where it's not covering like areas you don't want. But yeah, you could possibly use these techniques, but not with a sponge. You'd have to have a small brush. And just like, you know, just dab at it and everything. Uh, and I know for a fact, I don't think this would work on 54 millimeter. You may be able to get away with doing a little bit of stippling on a 75 millimeter. But not for skin. I mean, those figures are so small. I, I would just... I'm going to actually think... I'm thinking about doing a tutorial on how I paint those small miniatures. Because I got a, a, a buddy that's actually going to send me a couple... That he wants me to paint for him. And, um, so I'm most likely, I'm just, I'll just do a tutorial on how I do it. To be honest with you, I don't paint those small, those small figures as much because I am no spring chicken anymore. I am 42 years old when I first started this modeling I was in my 20s and my eyesight just does not see those small big those small details as much as I used to not to say that I couldn't get glasses or anything it's just sometimes it's hard for me to really see uh, real real small small details but it works. This really, to be honest with you, this this particular part of the tutorial is really not much of a tutorial because I'm just, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of showing you what I'm doing, but it, it's nothing that I haven't covered before, and I'm just painting it's a basically I'm just talking to the camera almost like a vlog but you know that's just that's just uh, me talking to the camera but what I'm doing here is basically nothing it's nothing new but anyway let me show you now you see how how you have more definition and around the eyes especially around the eyes let's, let's see if I can get back Right here, more definition in the nose, up in here in the, in the crevices. That's basically the technique. You, you want as much definition as possible without going overboard. That is one of the big rules. Don't go overboard when you're doing this stuff. I mean, you can get away with some things on certain kits. Like, this is a kit that's... 
to be honest with you, this kit's pretty forgiving. But if I was to be doing this technique on like a, a female kit, wouldn't look right. Now, if it was a female zombie kit, it, it would look okay. Okay. I think I'm about done with this particular part. Now, one thing I do want to mention, I'm going to show you real quick what I'm going to do. Now, this is just me. But, um, I got some, uh, I guess I'll have to use this over here, excuse me. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a dab of burnt sienna, just a little bit, get it on my brush, and I'm going to put some spots on his forehead, like so, just kind of just a few spots here and there and then I'm going to kind of like blat them away just to kind of what this is going to do is once I throw my wash on top of it okay once I throw my wash on top of it it's actually going to layer it over it and it's going to kind of give it like maybe like almost like a liver spot effect which you know i think is a pretty cool effect when you do this stuff you know i like to to dress up these kits as much as possible that's just my nature though when i when i paint a bust for some reason